What's up, everybody? Colton Soley, Jason Batacchio. Um, we're here. We just witnessed OU's domination of Tulsa, 66 to 17. We thought we'd hop on and offer, you know, a few top line thoughts, maybe five to ten minutes of uh, what we saw before we head back to Norman. But mm -hmm. um, Jason, first of all, let's start with the offense. Uh, put up huge numbers. Dylan Gabriel, we we talked about it. Uh, threw for five touchdowns and one interception, and it looked like on that one pick that you know he was hit really hard when he threw, but also yeah. you, you brought up a good point that um, Tulsa might have gotten away with the pass interference there. So Dylan yep. Gabriel pretty much flawless on the day. I think it was 28 of 31. Yeah, he broke uh, Landry Jones' single game pro, or I think completion it was a single percentage, yeah. Yeah, completion percentage record that was set back in, I think it was 2012. Um, what was he, 28 for 31 tonight? Yeah. Really yeah. efficient. Um, he he jumped 10 spots on the NCAA uh, career passing yards. He was 50th, now he's 40th. Yeah. Passed Russell Wilson, passed uh, a bunch of guys on there. So yeah. um, just a fantastic day from Dylan, but also the receivers. The, the deep passing game was really clicking and was really something offensive coordinator Jeff Levy put a focus on in this game, mm -hmm. um, especially after last week's um, abysmal mid receiver showing. Yeah, I mean, we had Nick Anderson come in and scored three touchdowns. I mean, he hadn't had a single touchdown in his career, his career. before today. Yep. Scores three. Um, Jalil Farouk made some nice plays. Uh, yeah, he's really coming into his own. I mean, yeah. yeah. Each. Andrew Anthony, those three guys had over 100 receiving yards. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, I, I think it's even more interesting to see those three guys flourish, especially when we thought it was going to be Andrew, Gavin, Drake. Well, I think coming into the season, it was like Drake and Jalil were the two. Yeah, but um, it, we've we've seen which Drake. Um, he even see, he still had a good game. Yeah, had a really good 53 game. Fifty-three came in there, had like five catches, pretty pretty quick. But yeah, um, uh, the offense obviously putting up sixty-six points. This pretty uh, <laughs> is not a regular um, occurrence for this team. So yeah. Um, Really high on that side of the ball, but Jason, what I found interesting post game talking to Brent Venables and Ted Roof was was the defense. Yep. Um, I predicted that they would give up a little less than 17 points, but still, 17 points is great. Uh, their scoring margin these first three games, I mean, it's in Jason's story. You can go read it on OUDaily.com, but it's insane numbers. I know that they played a pretty easy schedule, Jason, but you watch teams around the country lose to bad teams all day yeah. today. I mean, OSU literally just lost to South Alabama. I mean, South Alabama's pretty good, but, like, you yeah. look at Ohio beating Iowa State and yeah. Miami, Ohio beating Cincinnati tonight. I mean, and the way Bama played against South Florida today. Um, you can't – you just can't underestimate winning and winning big uh, yeah. against anybody. And we did see some some struggles uh, yeah. for OU's defense today, and Ted Roof talked about that and uh, said, you know, the biggest thing is third down defense. We did see some – breaks in coverage. Jason, talk about what you saw on those couple touchdowns Tulsa scored. I think a lot of it, and, and not to single out a single player, but there was a lot of breaks in coverage on the right safety side, especially from Reggie Pearson. Um, just kind of got fleeced on a few rollouts. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he, he went pretty heavy on the run commit, but then, you know, you have a guy leaking out. Um, that happened a few times. Um, I thought that there was just a few small breakdowns and no use like the back end corners were really good today from what i saw i mean gentry was solid um kendall dolby was solid kendall comes up with a pick i think yep. key lawrence got one yep. as well yep can i walker he had some play time was really good um obviously woody washington's woody washington just mr consistency almost um so yeah i mean even ou's defensive line and linebackers got in on coverage today which was interesting i mean Danny Stutzman returns a pick six. I think it was OU's first one since like since 2020 Cotton since, Bowl from yeah, Trey Norwood. Yep, exactly. Um, so just a really overall. Trace very, Ford had a pick. Yeah, yeah, and I think OU secondary is starting to become their strong suit. Um, I thought it was going to be their pass rush coming into the season, but I mean OU secondary is seems like it's really good right now. Um, Apologize for the noise. Not sure what alarm is going off. Uh, here on Tulsa's campus, but um, let's get to that pass rush, Jason, because we've yeah. talked the last two weeks about um, how that's, I mean, you talk to anybody, and that's been OU's number one weakness all season long. I mean, we're only through three weeks, but 
Um, the pass rush has been, you know, when OU beats Arkansas State 73 to nothing, that was the one thing we looked at and was like, oh, they can improve in that area. Um, we saw some gains in the right direction yep. um, today. Uh, we saw some sacks. We saw some pressures. But I think when – I mean, not to cut you off, I think once PJ got in the game, yeah, that's their true. pass rush changed almost immediately. Like, yeah, I still, think, I still think that that's the one area um, – and Roof talked about it after the game, but I still think that's the one area that is, is kind of missing with this yep. with this group. I mean, um, well, other than the miss, other than the missed tackles and the, and the breakdowns and coverage, OU's defense has pretty much been a huge step up from last year. Yep. And to take them to the next level, I think, um, again, every week going into it, it's going to be can OU's pass rush get there. Um, and we'll see. It, it, it's yet to happen. It's yet to happen at a consistent level, but uh, uh, we'll see next week as Big Twelve play starts getting getting rolling. Jason. Yeah, I, I think like you mentioned. I mean, OU's defense has been much improved. Um, there was a stat thrown out by a media member, like I think it was a week ago last season. OU threw two games at thirty three missed tackles. Um, heading into this game, they only had eight. So yeah, and, and if that's 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 clear. The tackling just from yeah. just from your just from watching the games is, is so much better. Not mm-hmm. even from last year, but just how much of a step they've take they've taken since the prior staff. Yeah. I, I think I wrote that either this week or last week. But yeah. tackling is usually the thing OU fans are, are you know screaming on Twitter about or X now. But um, <laughs> formerly no that one. that has not been an issue uh, with mm-hmm. this team, Jason. I know we only have a couple more minutes here, but let's throw out some breakout players. I mean, a lot of a lot of players got playing time, but you mentioned PJ. Uh, he almost had an interception. <laughs> yeah, if it almost. wasn't if it wasn't a flag on Tulsa, he would have had a crazy, freakish like interception. He's but insane. Talking to him after the game, um, just you know his relationship with Coach Chavis and, and the work he's put in. Um, He's you know, just gonna getting keep, more playing time. Yeah, he's, he's just gonna keep getting. Better. Sky's the limit for him. Obviously, a five-star guy. Everybody yeah. knows who PJ is, but um, kind of slower getting into the ro- rotation than I think he was banged up during fall camp. But mm-hmm. uh, another guy uh, who started at Cheetah, I think, with Justin Harrington's absence, Peyton Bowen. Yeah. What did you see from him today? He's all over the field. I mean, you know, obviously there's those things with the footwork and you know, those small little cues that you can see that, you know, maybe he wasn't picking up on in the cheetah position as well. But, I mean, for him to come out, um, and I think Lewis wrote about it, he's not here with us because, you know, limited capacity in the Tulsa press box. But um, he wrote about how, you know, one of Peyton's strong suits is his intangibles and his intelligence. Uh, I think that shine today, I mean, really solid in coverage, you know, didn't have a lot of, Breakage. He almost um, had a pick himself. Almost had a pick. Yeah, um, he was really solid on run support from what I saw. Um, I don't. I don't remember what his final numbers were. But just know, all over the field. Not to cut you off, but I remember seeing Brant for an extended period, uh, really having an animated conversation. And we see this every week with a variety of players, but I've seen it more with Peyton and just the intentionality that this coaching staff has with him and because they see that his talent is there and they see yep. the production he's had literally three games into his young freshman campaign. Yep. Um, there's a reason this guy was on every freshman All-American list um, nationwide. He is a stud, um, and we're just going to continue seeing that yeah. on display. But let's talk about real quick before we leave um, about the injuries situation. We didn't see yeah. Justin Harrington. Brent didn't have an update on him after the game. We saw Savion Bird leave. Uh, yep. We saw a variety of Gentry offensive got linemen hurt in there. for a bit. Well, Gentry came back, but, but he came back. Let's focus on Harrington and Bird. The Did two. Did Dixon play at all? Or? Yeah. Yeah. Bird and um, Harrington. And Harrington. Brent, Brent Venable said post game he's not sure on the status of either of those guys. We saw a variety of offensive linemen come in for Bird, including Caden Green, the young yep. guy. Uh, just, uh, Jason, entering Big 12 play, how big are those two guys' roles, and, and what what do you expect if they're not able to return for next week? It's interesting um, because Harrington, when I'm sort of walking around OU's uh, football facilities, I guess um, after the game against SMU, it was like I was just kind of walking. Um, I noticed that he was like, 
he had a lot of ice on his knee. Mm -hmm. uh, he was limping, and he, uh, his limp seems like it's gotten progressively better. But well, he traveled. He traveled, he traveled with the here. team, yeah. Which it, that doesn't really say much. It's only an hour and a half plus yeah, ride, but I just think it's depending on. I mean, the way Brent sort of it seems like they're awaiting some test I think results. He said, I think he says that they'll know more in the, in the next coming days. I would assume Tuesday we probably get an update. Um, yeah. But I mean, if Harrington's not good to go. And I mean, you know, it's full go with Dayson and Peyton at that cheetah spot. I mean, well, and as many people that can fill into that spot, I I do think Harrington's a big loss. He won the he yeah. won the job for a reason. He's mm -hmm. experienced. He came up with the huge pick against SMU. Yep, um, just a freak guy. But yep. uh, yeah, um, we don't want to throw too much at you guys. I know we're we're not even fully. <laughs> we just watched a four hour football game. Um, Heard a lot from players and, and coaches, but Jason, is there anything else that we want to leave the people with here on Saturday night? I, I There's a lot of crazy college football games going on. Right yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> I will say it again. I mean, Jackson showed why. Uh, Jackson Arnold, to be exact, showed. Can we stop the Arnold dozer? I mean, it's not working. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. Why are I'm not you, sure why. Why is OU why that's throwing their five-star quarterback up the middle? It's almost Kyle Shanahan-esque. <laughs> All right, well, but that's it from Tulsa. Um, go read our stories. I talked to Nick Anderson and his dad about his uh, coming out party with three, three touchdowns, uh, which is insane. Um, but uh, go read our stuff on OUdata.com uh, for all things OU football and all things the Sooners' win over Tulsa. Um, I'm Colton Sully. This is Jason. Uh, we out. <laughs>